from the morning reading. SBX, NDX, DJIA, and RUT post best weekly gain in 2016. All nine sectors notch weekly gain, spider cues, diamonds, and more in bull flag setup. Three of nine sectors moved higher and one was unchanged on Friday. XLY, XLP, and XLK were the strongest sectors while XLB was the weakest sector. Oil futures fell 77 cents to close at 31.96. Breath was mixed as decliners led advancers 1.01 to 1 on the New York Stock Exchange and advancers led 1.24 to 1 on the NASDAQ. The Qs rallied on Friday and formed a bull flag price pattern. Diamonds and SPY also formed a bull flag price pattern as each pulled back for a second day after a strong three-day rally on Friday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Numerous stocks are in bull flag, horizontal, and diagonal resistance breakout setups from Friday. The SPY, Diamonds, Qs, and IWM, which have traded below the 30-day moving average since late December, all closed above their 30-day moving average on Friday. Hello, this is Stephen Harris, a head trader from Falcon Global, where we model best practices for investors, traders, and day traders from entry to exit every trading day. In this daily video, I provide my opinion and insights of current market trends, market timing, volatility, and hedge risk levels for the upcoming day for the key U.S. financial markets. It is 5.26 a.m. Central Time, and I'm recording this in preparation for the market day of February the 22nd, 2016. Full disclaimer is at the end of the video, but be aware that this is for educational purposes only, and only you are responsible for the investing or trading decisions that you make. So let's go ahead and dive in. Another big overnight. In fact, if you look at all four of the U.S. broad market indices, they're up big with the S&P futures at the time of this cut up over 22 points or over 1%. The Russell futures up about 1.2%, the NASDAQ futures up about 1.25%, and the Dow futures also up well over 1%. Crude oil up huge, up about 3.5%. The euro down about three quarters of a percent, bonds down about a third of a percent, and gold getting crushed down over 2%. In overseas action, all positive. China up over 2%. Hong Kong up nearly 1%. Japan up also nearly 1%. Germany up nearly 2%. United Kingdom up well over 1%. In terms of the macroeconomic reports for today in the United States, there are no orange or red flag reports. Um, just a flash manufacturing PMI should not be a market mover. In terms of looking ahead, we have consumer confidence tomorrow during market hours as well as existing home sales and the Richmond Manufacturing Index. In terms of current volatility conditions, things have been coming down pretty dramatically. Short-term VIX well below 20 now at an 18.22, SKU also below the warning level. The IV percentile for the S&P, a 33, so that's down now in the lower third. The Russell, almost the same at a 39, as is the NASDAQ. The Dow, also a 33, so in that lower third. So these um, volatility has certainly calmed down substantially in the last week or so. We had no standard deviation moves put in on Friday in any of the S&P or other indices. So, uh, again, calm action there. And indeed, um, after the morning session, it really went pretty sideways as we were dealing with the monthly expiration. Let's go ahead and go to the charts. And I'm going to go to the futures because we did have such significant overnight action and as you see we're right up here against this resistance area and remember we've been talking about both the swing high here as well as here and painting this as an area so in order to truly break through resistance we need a close up above this 1947 area on the ES um, um, chart now, SPX would be a slightly different number, but bottom line, you're looking for a close above this area on whatever S&P chart you're looking 
at to be able to truly be a breakout of the of the range that we've been in ever since the beginning of the year let's go ahead and go to the Russell Russell also I mean right now these patterns are looking like bull flag patterns for sure you see the the bullish action the little bit of a retracement and then a break so these are all bull flag breakouts at this point so short-term trend is clearly bullish and we're starting to make some evidence that the intermediate trend could break out of a neutral pattern and go into something of a more bullish pattern as well and that would be giving us this higher high higher low and now a higher high again and you can see this very clearly on the Dow in fact even in the, in the shorter term you had this flag with again another higher low and now a higher high that is breaking out there as well so um, we clearly are building some strength and and fixing much of the technical damage that had been done in uh, the very first few days of January in terms of volatility you can see this is breaking down significantly we're still up over 18 until we truly get down below 18 this is still elevated and increased risk condition but uh, certainly it's coming down pretty dramatically from where it was and that's what you expect in a, a more bullish condition is that when you do have volatility that that spike comes back and crashes down very quickly and that's certainly what it's doing right now but it has not come down enough to say all clear and then let's take a look at bonds bonds are down a little bit in the overnight as you would expect with the big um uh, equity action to the upside but not substantially so so we'll continue to watch this and certainly it's not breaking this pattern as of yet <coughs> sorry about that and then uh, let's go back to the daily report and we'll continue to see this theme of continuing improvement though not yet an all clear signal by inter any means the market trend intermediate term phase opinion is in phase two this is trend reversal foot in the water selling puts and adding in some full-size stock positions but perhaps not um, you know gung-ho just buy everything in sight it is not yet that kind of market IBD status is in confirmed uptrend we continue to remind you though that um, for this last year plus we've had a lot of confirmed uptrend and market and correction signals as we've oscillated back and forth in this big range and nothing has been following through on either side so uh, we note that we're in confirmed uptrend but we also have those caveats until we see a stronger more consistent trending pattern accumulation distribution score on the S&P is a D minus NASDAQ and E so very very poor breath on those two key charts GMI index did improve one notch to a two out of six but still retains that sell signal and it has been in place since 1210 that author retains and confirmed over the weekend 100% uh, in cash position decision point scoreboards continue to show the short-term signals as being positive but against a longer term bearish so right now this is still in that stance where it's expecting that um, uh, this is a bearish um, pattern with a short-term bullish bounce did count bounce kind of setup and ultimately until we see this start to roll up through the additional time frames um, is to be watch with some suspicion so consensus of all this the mechanical signals with respect to the portfolio posture is that we are, are and still a market in transition and been range bound and until proven otherwise until we can truly set and break a consistent um, pattern out of that range and uh, confirm a trend either direction uh, where a suspect of anything really following through except just oscillating between the upper and lower parts of those range now we still have a, kind of a mixed picker we've been saying that it's been mostly a bearish bias 
that is improving here. So it's probably more of a mixed picture at this point uh, and not really an obvious buy bias to either side. Our shorter term patterns are, are bullish, but our longer term patterns are all still in a bearish stance. So really can't tip the hat too much to either side. Position sizing opinions, both mechanical systems are relatively um, benign and supportive right now. The portfolio system is at 100%. The volatility based on um, VIX futures system for the active trader is at the 50 to 75%. Intermediate term market posture is still in a weak bull, but this continues to gather strength. Uh, though it is set against a very bearish sentiment line. That sentiment line has started to um, slow in its rate of falling and um, could be um, setting up to start finally turning back up. So right now it's a very bearish sentiment line, but it is starting to show some signs that perhaps it could oscillate back towards the upper side. S&P and everything else you can see is up over 20 and two of these are certainly coming into range now where we're starting to think about 50. If, it, if these two go up over 50, the S&P and the Dow, that would certainly strengthen that bullish intermediate term market posture. In terms of the hedge warning status, we're still at level one plus. We still have this market in transition. If we truly break out of that um, area of resistance, I'll probably drop this to a threshold level one. So continue to slowly but surely bring down this elevated risk status as these um, technical conditions improve. In terms of specific warning areas, you see um, not very much on here anymore. A lot of this is healed. We're still this VIX futures up over an 18. We still have, um, well, really, much of this has pretty much gone away. We have, um, I don't really see anything to get too excited about. You see the fear and greed index all the way to a 50 now, so quite neutral um, and in huge contrast to where we were a month ago at a 9, even a week ago at a 21. So these things continue to improve. Now in terms of the special opinions, option income strategy, one of those warnings we did have is that VIX is still elevated and that's probably the most important um, signal of warning that we still have left. Um, that these volatility is still quite elevated, though down from where it was. So this is um, still a outside the window to initiate new option income strategies for novice traders. More aggressive traders can certainly take advantage of these, but probably want to use reduced position and then also be ready for those increased delta and vega moves that you get with high volatility conditions. Cover call strategies and put selling they're borderline to probably uh, ex just full out acceptable to initiate new positions for novice traders. Uh, you probably do want to be very defensive in those positions. One of the authors I follow on uh, this subject over the weekend was talking about going back to normal position sizing but still being very defensive in their construction of their cover call strategies. So using in the money strikes or at the money strikes, using low beta positions and uh, not really mixing in any high beta at all. Also um, perhaps legging into positions. Um, you know, so all these different things that you can do to increase your defensiveness of your cover call strategy while at the same time increasing your exposure to the bullish side of the market. If this market does really start to rip and you find yourself two weeks from now, you know, up 150 points or something like that, you've got to be in the game and exposed. So there's um, certainly ways to increase your exposure without going all in, without going with you know perhaps too much aggressive um, positioning because this is not yet a market that's given us an all clear all clean signal it is giving us very much improved signals put selling much the same way be somewhat defensive and certainly be in a position size that you are willing to own should this somehow turn and break with these current patterns 
Um, sector specific, you can see again, short to intermediate term, a lot of healing, but um, a lot of work left to do to get that kind of all green, all three time frames, all sectors, you know, all go. Notice consumer staples and utilities. The defensive ones are the ones that are all green, all three time frames. So we continue to see that much of this rotation at this point of the um, bullish retracements has been very, very defensive in its market rotation. In terms of percent change, you can see uh, very mixed day on options expiration day, and indeed, um, you know, some of these down, you know, well over 1% with the materials, and yet at the same time, several of the um, sectors were actually positive. So, very, very mixed day, uh, but certainly we're also noting that the five day into the one month, and in some cases, into the three month are starting to bleed you know into some consistency and some green so things have healed quite a bit and we need to give um, some credit to that on the relative rotation graph though notice we still we still see these very defensive dividend paying groups xlu that's your utilities iyr that's your real estate REIT etf you know, they're the ones that are up here in this strong corner. They're the ones that are doing well, though we start to see some improvement in other areas. And I think that's probably enough for today. And what, I guess a couple things here today. Um, if you find this is helpful to your trading, there is something that you can do in showing appreciation. You can certainly subscribe to the YouTube channel. That gives you the added advantage of um, getting an email to announce when content has been posted. I generally try to have this done by 7.30 Central Time each morning, but sometimes like this morning, it's actually a little earlier and that might be of some help to your morning routine. Uh, you can also like on YouTube. Uh, this thing's free, but uh, it also, uh, it takes time and effort on my part. And if you want to say, uh, hey, I want to give you a pat in the back because this is uh, appreciated and helps me in my trading, that's one of the ways you can show that appreciation. And then also, um, you can retweet me to your Twitter followers, to your stock twit followers, etc. Or on the social media platforms that you probably are on with your trading. One of the other things with YouTube uh, is um, you can use those settings. You can go to that gear setting. You can change to high definition. You'll get a much cleaner shot, much better resolution to those charts. And then you can also speed up that playback to where you can listen to this at one and a half times the normal speed. You should probably find that that's still quite adequate. And being able to comprehend what's being done and yet at the same time speed the time up and cut it down. And then we'll kind of just scroll through the rest of these today. We'll talk about it on a different day. Go to the hyperlink there. Hit the pause button if you need more time to review or you see something of interest that you want to dive into. Disclaimers as always, hit the pause button if you need more time to review the disclaimers. We're not your broker, or CTA, or registered financial advisor. You have to make your own financial decisions that are appropriate to your circumstance. You can see the hyperlink that goes to the full set of disclosures. We'll see you back here tomorrow morning with the Falcon Global Market Preview. Good trading.